Hmm, what do we got here? Let's see. Ha ha ha. All right, fellas. You guys remember this little mofo here? The iPhone 10 board that I reballed the CPU on that wound up having a CPU short? Here we go. My first CPU reball. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm doing it. And I think it's just the balls under the CPU. So I have here the board with the CPU on it. I have here the NAND. I have here all my stencil stuff. And I have here um, somewhat of a drive to do it. So here we are looking at this board. Now, what line was it we decided was shorted? We decided that it was this line here on the CPU side, if I remember correctly. Oh, geez. That's right. This is the one where I went through all this trouble fixing all these components along here and never got to find out if this thing works. So let's just have a look at that line on Flex for you. It was PP CPU E core. Is that the one that we decided was shorted? Let's just go ahead and check it real quick. We'll just do a diode mode measurement. I'm going to do red probe on ground and we'll do black probe on CPU E core. Yeah, and we're getting 0 0.8. So that is a direct short to ground on this CPU E core line. And in my last video, I'll pop it up in a bubble or something. We're applying power to this board in one, two, three, power. You will see that I narrowed that down, I think, to one of these two coils. And I believe this is going to be due to a short underneath the CPU. So step one is going to be remove the CPU. So let's get it into a holder. You might notice that I'm working without gloves today. That is because I'm working without gloves today. I don't have any, I don't have any gloves. All right, so slipping this here under the microscope. I've got my hot air set to 340 or 50-ish C, and we're going to begin warming this up. I'm gonna assume that it already has plenty of flux. So we're gonna gradually warm this dude up. And as it warms up, I'm going to insert my tool. Now, since it's already been switched over to leaded, this should actually happen, happen very easily. It's just marvelous. I'll set that aside, set that right over here. We're gonna be needing that. Let's go ahead and begin cleaning up the board. For this, I'm going to use, I think we're just going to do some hot air wicking here. I try not to go against the pads, like I try to pull backwards like this. And try not to go against the grain with my wick. Okay, this is actually looking uh, really good. And I'm trying to do this without floating the balls under the PMIC. Uh, because after all this crap that I'm going through, I, I don't want to have to redo the PMIC. Now, I have successfully done the PMIC on the iPhone 10 before, but still, I, I mean, look, we don't have any balls popping out around this mofo. Look, here's our PMIC. For everybody that said you've shorted the PMIC, I don't, I really, I'm not feeling it. I don't think I did. Look, there's no balls popping out around the PMIC. It looks, I mean, it, it, it looks fabulous. The PMIC has fabulous looking balls. All right, so let's go ahead and hit this with some alcohol and clean this up because this looks like complete total dog doo-doo. baby all right so this looks fairly well presentable enough to slap a cpu on it oh god oh serious mm. that's the way we like it get off of my cpu reball mofo so drum roll please. Next we want to see if our short is gone. To do this, we're going to do the same exact test on these three caps. Now I'm going to put my red probe on ground and we are going to put our black probe back on the line that was shorted when we had the CPU here and we are getting... Drum roll please. 
5,000 big ones. Hey, when did we get in Ohms mode? Whoops. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do that in diode mode. Red probe on ground. Black probe on our CPU line. And look at this. No more short. We should probably check the CPU itself. Because if the CPU itself is shorted internally, then I'm completely, totally wasting my time. So looking over at Flexboard view, let's see where those pins actually connect. Having a look at the CPU itself, we can see that those pins are connecting lines surrounding this like big old green cap here. If we look off the corner of this chip, we should be able to check this pin, AA10 and AA11 right next to each other. And it should be fairly well easy to identify. Well, this will be confusing because it's actually inverted. We're checking the pins orientated like this way. So we have to remember to reverse everything in our brain. So that means that the capacitor in question is actually this one right here. We're going to be looking at the lines next to that one. And instead of on bottom, we're going to be looking on top. Instead of on top, we're going to be looking on bottom. And let's see what we can work out here. Gosh, it's going to be tricky. If we check for a short to ground, we can check on both sides just to be sure. We're going to check between this pin and this pin. I'm getting, what was that, 50 ohms? That's an acceptable reading. And then let's slip down here and let's check between this pin and this pin. That is a 0.8 ohms. That is not an acceptable reading. And in any world of looking at this, is that okay? Um, no, that is not okay. So we are getting a short to ground right here. Wait a minute, but how would I get a short here but not up here? Let's try that once more. I am. But it's 20 ohms. Okay, so we're getting 20 ohms up here. And how about right here? 0.6 ohms. I must be wrong about how I'm looking at the schematic. I don't know. I'm getting like some mixed readings here. Maybe they're not connected internally inside the CPU. Interesting. Well, honestly, it's kind of hard to say exactly what to believe there. I don't think the line that is shorted is supposed to be shorted. So I do believe that this A11 CPU is damaged internally. So all of you that said, you messed up the CPU. Ah, you're right, you're right. So let us go ahead and place this into a holder. I'm, go only, uh, I'm only trying to get this thing to hold still for a minute while I clean up all of its slop here. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to warm her up with some hot air. I do have it in a preheater, but I don't have the heater set high enough to melt solder. And we're just going to use our wick here to mop it up. There we go. I'm doing a terrible job. There we go. I should probably not even be wicking this. I should probably just run an iron over it and call it a day. Alright, let's clean up this nasty old funk. It actually doesn't look bad in terms of missing pad. No, I didn't rhyme on purpose. We got a little oxidized pad up here. We're going to leave it. Solder will stick to that with no problem. All right, clean this up a little bit. I think the CPU is going to be shorted internally, which is going to prevent me from actually being able to get this working. But a lot of you gave me some really good suggestions as to what I did wrong during my reballing. So we can at least give this another shot. Let's see if we can reball it, shall we? All right, we're going to lay this thing on a standard issue napkin. Ooh. Wait a minute. What am I doing? We're going to line this up on a napkin. I totally forgot. This thing came with all the right stuff. I got an A11 holder. Like, 
So let's go ahead and slide this down in the proper holder like this. There we are. And it's actually made to hold the stencil right aligned over it like that. Boom. Hmm. I almost feel like I like my napkin better. All right, so let's try putting all of you all's wisdom to use here. You all told me many, many good things. Let's start by applying some very, 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 very wet solder paste. There we are. Just like, just like everybody instructed me. I'm kidding. This paste is way too wet. All right, so let's smear all this down in its holes really good. Mm -mm. Nothing like a little wet paste in the morning, shall we? So let's get a little bit serious here. The number one thing that I was told was to dry the paste. So I have started to use a napkin and I, I wipe down my rework. You know, I wipe down what I'm filling like this. But what I was explained to do is to dry it in a way that we press on it. Now, I don't feel like I should be pressing on the CPU but I feel like this one's already damaged. So we're just gonna push, push. And we're just gonna kind of work this napkin around here. And we're trying to soak up as much flux as we can. I'm gonna go ahead and completely remove the nozzle for my rework station. We're gonna do this without any nozzle. I'm gonna use all 340C now I'm going to sort of lay my tweezers here across the center of the stencil to hold this down. And we're going to begin warming this up. Now I will tell you, I have not tried to put new balls on a CPU since my last embarrassing, miserable failure of a video that I posted on YouTube. This is my very next attempt, and this is only using the advice of the comments section that everybody was so kind to leave and tell me everything that I was doing wrong. And the number one comment was, dry your freaking paste. Okay, I see some ballage starting to melt down here at the bottom left corner. I'm gonna to try to look, roll this from my bottom left corner to the top right. Here we go. Thank you everybody that told me to dry my paste with a paper towel. I'm holding this down long enough to make sure that the solder all re-solidifies. Now I'm going to pick around here for a little bit and just get rid of some of these extra little stragglers. Huh, so for everybody that said reballing the CPU is actually a breeze, I really appreciate it. It gives me courage to continue trying. And honestly, after drying my paste, that was extremely easy. go so we just want to get some of this excess let go mofo out of the way so now that I've got all the excess crap picked up let's go ahead I'm gonna heat this one more time in hopes of getting it to pop out of the stencil a little bit easier and you see we've got some balls here that are kind of flattened out maybe from where my tweezers were laying okay almost there Now up here, I just accidentally messed it up a little with my blade. I touched a piece of molten solder and strung it. So I'm going to add a little tiny bit of flux to it right there and heat it again. Should be okay, I hope. Maybe, maybe not. All right, let's see if this, uh, let's see if this chip will come out of the stencil.
All right, let's see what it looks like. It's actually not that bad. It's not perfect, but it's actually not bad either. We've got one spot here where a ball just absolutely did not stick. Or wait, one spot, right? Yeah, it looks like we've got one or maybe two spots where a ball just absolutely did not stick. So let's see if I can place this here manually. You know, unless the pad's too far gone. That pad might be gone. Nope, that pad's fine. There we go. Now it has fairly usable balls on it. Didn't I see something else with a tiny little ball? Hmm. All right, well... There you have it, fellers. Let's have one more quick quick glance here before we see what happens. So here is my beautiful reballing job. It was actually, you know, it's not actually beautiful, but it's a hell of a lot better than the last one where I crunched off and chopped away to achieve this. This is actually usable, except the fact that I think I've already destroyed the CPU. So there is our fabulous looking balls. And next, we're going to go back over here and we're going to put this on the board and see if the line that was shorted is shorted again. I'm thinking that it most likely will be. So our orientation is gonna be like that. Let's warm this up some, and we're gonna add, I mean, a baby amount of flux. We don't want a bunch of boiling. So there's a baby amount pretty much already. Okay. To be cute, we'll just go ahead and use the CPU as a uh, squeegee. Yeah, perfect. You guys taking notes? There we go. Ooh, baby. All right, guys, let's solder down the CPU and see if we've still got a CPU short. I'm pretty sure we will. Okay, gradually start warming this up. Wait, I don't have a nozzle on here. Smooth, huh? Could probably do this without a nozzle, but I want my big nozzle. <laughs> All right, so let's try this again with the nozzle. We're gonna be able to warm this up and see if we can't get this CPU to settle daintily down onto the board. Trying to warm it up very slowly. <clears throat> Little move, move, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right, lots of surface tension there. That is a nicely soldered CPU. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and skip right up here to our CPU line that keeps showing up as shorted and see if it is still shorted. I'm betting that it still is, but maybe just, just, maybe. Maybe we'll get lucky. <clears throat> so we're going to put one line on ground. I'm doing this with the board smoking hot. So here we go. One line on ground. And we'll put our other line here. And we get 1.4 ohms. 1.5 ohms. Well, ladies and gentlemen... Although I did very much greatly improve my CPU reballing skills, no problem reballing. This was actually really easy. This CPU is damaged and no longer works. Let's let it cool off and see if that line is still shorted. I'm going to put my red probe on ground. 
And I'm going to put my black probe right here and we are getting 0.00000000000. I'm a miserable failure. Well, hey, at least I did develop some reballing skills. So that's it for now, folks. I'll see you soon. Have a good day.